Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings, a five minute review no less. Cheers. For the more observant of you, you will notice I've got new glasses. They're already quite dirty, but they're new glasses. And the strange thing that I've noticed immediately is that no matter where my head goes, the camera's staying in focus. So clearly it just took a dislike to my old glasses. Or so did I, so that's fair enough. Today I'm talking about a book called Ashes of London by Andrew Taylor. So, full disclosure, I know Andrew Taylor. He's a delightful fellow. I've had several meals and drunk various bottles of wine with him over the years. And that is why I've never reviewed one of his books. Because I was once talking to a friend of mine, Ruth Dudley Edwards, very good writer, very hilarious books, if you ever get a chance to read them. And she admitted that she had never read one of my books because she said, don't, don't be offended, but I would hate to read one of your books and then have to lie to you to say I liked it if I didn't. Which I thought, well, that's actually quite reasonable. That's a fair enough comment. <clears throat> I'd already started buying her books and really enjoyed them anyway, so... There you go. I lost out there. I had to buy her book. She won't buy mine. Never mind. Andrew Taylor, however, is a writer I've wanted to read for about 15 to 20 years and never have. So last year, when it was my birthday, my son said, what can I get you for your birthday? And I said, got an idea. How about a book by Andrew Taylor? And I happened to be passing by the brand new bookshop in Oakhampton called Dogberry and Finch, which is organised and run by the delightful Kate McCluskey. And I saw in her window that she had this very book. Not this title, this book. So I went in and said, don't sell that. I'm sending my son up here later. She said, all right. My son finished his hockey practice, went up to the bookshop, saw this, said, oh, I think my dad wants that. And Kate said, is your dad Michael Jackson? And he said, yes. She said, OK, you can buy it. He was a bit confused. Never mind. So I had this. I didn't have a chance to read it before Christmas. I picked it up last week and it's finished, which is no mean task because it is 482 pages long. But I absolutely loved it. This is nothing to do with Andrew being a mate. This is because it's a damn good book. Um, <clears throat> it's set in the period 1666 when there was the Great Fire of London. And it actually starts with the Great Fire in progress. The Great Fire wiped out pretty much all of London from the monument going west, as it was in those days, and absolutely destroyed St Paul's Cathedral. Dog, lie down. You're too loud. Thank you. But the Great Fire was hugely damaging to London and caused the rebuilding of Great Swathe under Christopher Wren and other people. <clears throat> There's a chap, John James Marwood, who is a very interesting character. He's the son of a traitor. He's at this time... It was not too long after Charles II came to the throne. Before him, there was Charles I. And then there was this period of um, miserableness, really, when Cromwell executed the first king, uh, Charles I, and then Cromwell took over. All those people who were involved with Cromwell were really rather frowned upon. Those who were regicides and had a part in the execution of Charles I were not particularly favourably looked upon. In fact, they were captured and executed in nasty ways. But during the fire, a man is discovered near St Paul's with his thumbs tied behind his back and a stab wound in the back of his skull. So he's obviously been murdered and he's obviously been murdered by someone who's quite competent, who knows where to put a knife. James Marwood is forced to hunt this murderer. While doing so, he encounters a young woman who's obviously quite keen to pursue her own freedom. And then it starts moving in. It's a very interesting book because it's written first person from the perspective of James Marwood. And then it goes into third person when it looks at the young woman. 
and it works really really well you don't notice it, it you just slide from scene to scene quite smoothly but the main thing about this story is it's these two characters in the main and how they interact and then there's another murder discovered and then a third person is killed <clears throat> but this is all about life in London during the fire which is superbly well told. It's also about life in England at the time, immediately after the Civil War, immediately after the Protectorate and the Commonwealth, leading into the Renaissance under Charles II. So there's a huge amount going on, and it's looking at the perspectives of different people, those people who supported the King, those people who supported Cromwell, those people who are just religious fruitcakes, basically. All types of different people. And it's so well put down on paper. I really can't recommend this highly enough. If you've got a fair bit of time, it is a fat book. We like fat things, that's not a problem. You'll really enjoy it if you love crime and history. Really well told. There you go. That's my five minute review of the week. I'm going to try to do more five minute reviews, but it is going to vary weekly as to how much time I've had a chance to read. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy that, you can help support me buying books to review so that I don't just get books sent th through to me by publishers, because that can be quite tedious, by going to the link at the bottom where there's a Patreon link. And if you go there, you can help support this channel. What nice fellows you are. Apart from that, go to the bottom, there's a comment section. If you've got comments to make about Andrew Taylor, myself, or videos, or anything at all, shove them down there. Then you can hit the subscribe button, you can hit the bell if you want to be notified when there's a new video comes out, and you can share it amongst your friends and family if you really want to be thought of as a tedious bore. Never mind. Apart from that, <clears throat> I actually managed to do another painting this week. Isn't that lovely? I like it. Mm, very nice. So I'm going to look at having some of these paintings knocked up into cards, I think. Picture of Dartmoor. I took the photo last Friday, painted it on Saturday. Looks better than my face, doesn't it? Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers. See you soon. I'm going back to my cup of tea now. Bye-bye. <laughs>